What's going on, fish heads? Today I want to show you how you can very easily make your own water purification system. There's a lot of kits on the market for anywhere from 120 up to about $500, and those work really well for your home drinking water because they're heavily concerned with how the water tastes. But your fish don't care so much about that. So I've got here the bare essentials for what you're going to need. First, you want to filter out some of the stuff in the water before it hits a reverse osmosis filter. So if you get yourself a 10 micron charcoal filter, this works really well. It'll remove your chlorine so you can still use some of the tap water to mix in if you want. These cartridges are universal. I like to use these big blue DuPont cartridges. They come with a sediment filter, which does not filter chlorine. So on my setup, I've got two of these. I've got one sediment filter, and then I've got the next one with charcoal filters going after that. And that way, the sediment filter has a 10 micron hole size, the charcoal filter has a 10 micron hole size, so the only thing my charcoal gets used for is chlorine removal. And that means I can take the charcoal out, let it sit for a month, and it renews because the chlorine evaporates. The next thing you're going to need is the actual osmosis membrane. And you can buy this housing here for between eight and eleven dollars usually. And screws off. You want to watch for this gasket that falls out because it will all the time. And the osmosis membrane itself runs usually about twenty-two. If you buy this locally, you're going to look to pay probably about forty dollars for it. But for a setup like this where you can buy something ahead of time, you can get a couple extras so you always have something in stock and you still save a load of money. Assembly of these is super easy. Do not touch the blue area on this. Uh, it will potentially damage it and increase the failure rate. So you're going to put the gasket side down into the tube. You're going to push it in until it's basically level. Some of them stick out a little bit, but generally they'll go level. And again, making sure your gasket's in place. Screw the lid on. Now this one's loose. So I'm going to do it upside down. I don't have this problem with my other one. The last thing you're going to need is a flow reducer. And the flow reducer is important because if there's not some back pressure on your osmosis membrane, it's not going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I've got all this hooked together just to give you a good idea of what you can do on your own. You can see how you can make your own very cheap, very easy filtration system for between $50 and $70 that does exactly what you want to do and nothing else. So let me go ahead and show you my setup. It's pretty messy because this is the utility bathroom and nobody ever comes in here. So the whole room's plumbed in PEX where I've got a master shutoff. It runs around to my sediment filter. And this has that white 10 micron sediment filter that I showed you earlier. From there it goes into a 10 micron charcoal filter. I take these out once a month and I swap them. Every four months I throw them away and I put in new ones. A pack of two costs eight dollars, so that's not a big deal. From there I've got chlorine free tap water coming out and I've got that running to a splitter where one side goes to an RV pressure regulator, the other side runs to my osmosis membrane. Now I've got two of these, and the way that I've got these plumbed together is you've got reverse osmosis water and you've got waste water. And for every gallon of reverse osmosis water you get, you're going to lose between four and seven gallons of waste water. So to help reduce this, I've run the waste water up to a secondary membrane. Now the secondary membrane is going to go bad about 5% faster than the bottom one. But 
The membranes themselves are $20, and that's significantly cheaper than the water. So you can see the secondary output, I've got this 550 rated flow reducer, and that is the milliliters per minute of reduction that you actually get in this. And that means that every day, this system is taking 210 gallons and throwing it down the drain. You can plumb this into the drain itself. They make adapters for that for about $5. I've got it running straight into the drain because sometimes I just need chlorine-free tap water. So I've got my two outputs here, and you might notice that the connector on this one is pink and this one is not, and that's because this one is a one-way valve. And the reason for that is when I've got these two coming out, mixing here, I've then got, from this pressure regulator, chlorine-free tap water coming in and mixing. And I've got this tap water matching the pressure coming out of these two RO outputs. And these one-way valves guarantee that if there's an issue with water pressure someday, that it's not going to take water and force it back through the system and mess up my membranes. So these are just one-way valves. I've got here a couple of sensors. I've got one before the tap water mix. I've got one after the tap water mix. And this is to let me know how my water quality is at any given point, how well the system's working, and to track whether my membranes are going bad. So let me show you the way that this works. You've got two options, in and out. So this is supposed to be a, an easy way to compare your, your tap water to your RO water, but this is what I use it for for my setup. So you can see the reverse osmosis water is totaling about 30 parts per million total dissolved solids. Then I've got the out, which is a mixture of the tap and the RO. And you can see that that hovers between 150 and 170. Uh, it usually stays right at 160. It's just, it's cranky right now because I just replaced the filter and it's still settling in. Now, 160 might be where your water already is, in which case, lucky you, this doesn't apply to you. But you can see, my tap water is 348. And 348 is about 150 higher then I can have my fish in without them getting sick. Soft water fish, anything above about 200, they start to have bizarre health problems. And I didn't find this out until I had wasted $400 on vet bills trying to cure some sick fish that I became convinced had tuberculosis because nothing else matched. They started having symptoms that looked like that. And the entire problem was just horrible stress because of my hard water. So running this, I don't have to worry about it anymore. Now these connectors are all just push fittings. The base connector screws into this, so you've got water in, RO water out, waste water out. You don't need the one way if you're going to be using these just to mix manually. So if you're going to run this out and pour it into a bucket, and when you're done, turn the whole system off so that you're not wasting 210 gallons of water every day, then you can just get a pack of these, and these are cheaper. These have a little bit of a tendency to leak. You can see I've got a little bit of stuff coming out right here because I was messing with the tubes earlier. So I'm gonna have to take this piece off and I'm gonna have to reapply my sealant to it to stop that from happening. Uh, the first time I did this, I just used the regular Teflon tape. This time I'm gonna be using the heavy duty just so it holds a little bit better. This middle bar, is a little bit wet because I sprayed water everywhere earlier, but it doesn't leak. Uh, these are not normal threading. These are, I forget what the name is, but they're the threads that reduce as they go in, and sometimes those work really well, and sometimes they don't. So I'm going to include these in the description because initial setup, these come with the sediment filter. It saves you some money if you want to set it up the way that I have, but... There are other canisters, and the other ones probably will be less leaky. These ones, I have to come in and reseal, I don't know, about once a year, which isn't a big deal, but it's not worth saving 8 or $10 for. That's it. I hope you found that informative. Something that you really want to remember is that you have to make sure that you keep your chlorine removal working, because chlorine will destroy your reverse osmosis membrane. 
Something else that's worth noting is there's a lot of pre-built kits on eBay that run just a little bit more expensive than this. They come with a whole lot of filters and things. They really seem a whole lot easier to set up on average. And that may be true if you're not into do-it-yourself stuff. But the total cost of this comes out to about two cents a gallon, averaged over a year if you're doing 300 gallons a month. And the total cost of running one of the pre-built kits comes out to about six or seven cents a gallon over the course of a year for the same thing. Uh, they do tend to use universal cartridges, so if you get one of those, you're probably not going to be screwed on price for cartridge replacements, but you're going to have to be replacing cartridges that you really don't need for a fish tank. Uh, the extra cartridges may make the reverse osmosis filter last 20% longer, but they cost enough that that completely offsets the cost of replacing the RO filter or the RO membrane more frequently. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more informative stuff in the future. Share it with anybody you think might be interested and you'd be doing me a huge favor. And We'll see you guys next time.